Hey, what's up guys? Give me a thumbs up <laughs> if you guys can hear me uh, testing a new setup tonight. Um, got some background music, you know, uh, fixed my microphone. So just let me know if everything is kind of good to go and we're going to get uh, started pretty soon. got a double thumbs up so that means we are good sweet so So the whole idea with the stream tonight is to uh, do some gestural studies. Uh, I might turn these into a, a more refined piece later on, but probably for tonight it's just going to be very uh, simple. Um, but we're going to get we're going to touch on some very important stuff. So all right, let's get started. So what I'm going to do here. I have a bunch of references on the second monitor. So I think I'm gonna start with some very primitive shapes. So you know what, like I always wanted to do, to fully translate an exercise I've done in, in drawing into 3D. So let's see if that Let's see if that works. This is this is very funny because because you don't have an hour to go do cardio every day. Well, nobody has time for that. Oh man! All right, so I never done this exercise before this way, uh, so it's gonna be fun to see. How, how it turns out um, so you guys bear with me So basically what I'm doing right now is, for those of you who draw, uh, you, you may have done uh, uh, stuff like this. So you start with some very primitive shapes, maybe like a box or something. Um, I, I, never, I never really sculpted like this. So this is very interesting for me as well to see uh, what's gonna happen. <laughs> so yeah, it makes, you know, makes things a little bit more interesting. Uh, for me, too. So uh, at this at this point, uh, the overlapping of these forms it's very important. So if the guy is doing this. Actually, the hips are forward because this is pinching here. Okay. All right. And the whole purpose of doing these lives together is just to study, um, just to have some fun, uh, maybe inspire you guys to do more studies as well. So let me know if you guys are actually sculpting something. I know yesterday uh, it was very impromptu. Um, it was not planned at all. <laughs> Same thing with today, but yeah, you know, whatever. 
so but but still like i had some friends texting me last night saying like hey i, I sculpted this uh, while watching your stream you know so yeah this kind of stuff it's, it's pretty interesting so if you guys are modeling or sculpting drawing or whatever let me know This is, <laughs> oh man, this is fun. You know, now that I have a little bit more information to compare, I can start to see. And then this knee here is probably, yeah, tilted down a little bit. So you can see that I'm already starting to, to find uh, the flow or the gesture just using very primitive shapes. And again, this is an exercise that I did on uh, Elias class when I was uh, on a workshop. He, he taught us about the Russian approach, which I felt in love with uh, the academic Russian approach for drawing and, and painting. Uh, so, yeah, I, I totally fell in love with it, bought a bunch of books and start reading more and more. Uh, and you know, being incorporating that into my, my practice, into uh, uh, not only my drawing, but also to the way I perceive forms and I how I see shapes and, and things like that. So this is very interesting. All right, so let's just keep going. So let's just do a quick measurement here. Uh, so this, if this is this size, this is gonna go probably here. We're gonna put, this is gonna be the fit. So for the feet, we're just gonna use a, something like this. Keep it simple. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> this is literally, I'm literally doing this for the first time. So I'm actually very excited to see if this is gonna work out or not. I'm pretty sure it will work. Uh, the, the thing is that I'm just not used to this, right? Like I've never done this before, so. But what I want us to start capturing is, it's the pose, right? So I wanna, I wanna make sure I'm, I'm fully capturing the tilt of the hips, so it's it's definitely going this way here. Uh, and then this is tilted for uh, the anterior rotation of the pelvis, and then here this might be a little bit over overly rotated. Uh, the head might be a little bit too small, so we can just make this a little bit bigger, and we can take some measurements later too. Uh, and this is actually. I think this needs to be a little bit wider. Same with the hips. Yeah. And then we can follow, we can do like a quick plumb line. Uh, you know, I'm kind of plumbing things here. from the three quarter, I can already feel the leg. Um, I think this might be a little bit too, too short. So let's just kind of do this. I think the, the knees need to be, okay. Uh, we can use one for the hands, another tiny box for the hands. 
So for the hands, I may use a little bit of more of a organic shape. So it's, it's a little bit more this way. So for the hands, I'm just gonna indicate a little bit more form. So, so we can tell that there's something going on here. zoom out a little bit this is this is interesting yeah, like the, the thing about doing things you've never done before is that it's interesting because you you don't you don't know to how to properly judge if things are going in the right direction uh, but again okay so then the arm is going to connect here I'm gonna probably have to adjust a bunch of stuff later on, but it's still interesting no matter what. So if you have, if you guys have any questions or uh, any comments or anything, please feel free to drop in the comments uh, section, and I'll be answering and talking to you guys along the way. I'm gonna probably spend maybe uh, let's see, uh, around like two hours. So we are ten minutes in. So yeah, we have plenty of time. And I'm not rushing things at all, as usual, trying to uh, keep things uh, slow and steady and be conscious and mindful of what I'm doing. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's scope along. Hey, what's up, guys? Okay. You, Raf, and Anigur got me too. Nice. That's awesome, Callum. Yeah, it's great to hear you, man. All right, all right. This is a YouTube exclusive live. I mean, I don't even know what that means, but yeah, I'm only streaming here on YouTube. Um, uh, like, like, can you can you stream on multiple platforms at the same time? I thought that was you, you couldn't do that, but I guess you can, based on your question. Okay, so this gonna come in here uh, we're gonna split this guy and then this one I'm gonna mirror so we can do something else with these hand so this one on my reference the guy it's almost like the David's hand position so he he's on a contrapostal very classical pose and then maybe rotate it outwards a little bit okay look to the side we're gonna imagine like the arms are coming here and the elbow so this hand should be tilted up a little bit more and maybe just let's just rotate it in and I think this guy should be a bit longer and I want to make sure I'm capturing the the tilt of the rib cage as well. So this should go lower a little bit, and we have the opening of the rib cage here. Okay. All right. So if I have tried VR sculpting, I did actually. I tried. Uh, many years ago, uh, one of the first versions of Oculus, I believe, of the medium. Um, and at that time, it, it, there was no move brush. Uh, it, it was a very early version. I mean, no excuse, excuses because people were already doing amazing stuff. So 
uh, but it was very hard for me. But since then, there was a bunch of new updates and softwares and, and things like that that came out, and I'm, I'm really excited to try it. Uh, and, and and matter of fact, I was actually at, at the Oculus website because I don't have a a VR device, so I'm I'm really thinking about getting one. So if I do, uh, I would probably just stream my whole learning process with you guys. Uh, so that might be interesting as well, you know. Uh, I'm gonna be learning and sharing, and we may go into this journey together. Uh, but yeah, definitely interested in, in picking it up. I might do it soon, so we'll see. Okay, so let's just kind of. We have this other knee here, which should be around here. It's a little bit lower because this leg is bent. And then if it's lower, it should be tilted even more, right? Because this is kind of rotated. And then for the feet, I'm gonna actually grab these feet and rotate outwards a little bit. And then this feet here, we're gonna do the opposite way. And he's actually on his tiptoes. And we can just kind of... Let's just grab the floor so we can we know where our ground floor is. Our ground plane. <laughs> All right, if this is correct, I <laughs> literally have no idea if this is gonna, very hard to judge, but although I'm, I'm actually impressed with how much we can connect the dots already. Uh, this is probably a little bit wider. Head is definitely too small. Uh, maybe use an oval for the head. Let's also make sure we are imagining the neck here. And I think we can start All right, so let's see, we have a couple more questions. Uh, yeah, the Adobe Medium, that's the one I wanna practice for sure. Uh, what did I learn from Spider Zero? Well, Simon is an amazing artist. Uh, he really pushed me. So I took one of his classes uh, back in 2016, 17, I believe. And he really pushed me on to the composition and the flow and uh, making making stuff a little bit more complex and complicated also taught me a lot about uh, dynamic poses and and, uh, and and design in general. So to, to definitely recommend if you guys are thinking in taking any of his classes. Uh, he's he's definitely an amazing guy, an amazing sculptor, amazing artist. So this is a so. For those of you who just joined, this is a completely new exercise. I never done. I've done this in drawing, right? But I never done this uh, uh, in ZBrush. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to kind of challenge myself a little bit. So I decided to start the whole figure using blocks uh, representing the the big landmarks. Uh, and this is very self-explanatory, but. Yeah, I'm actually I'm gonna start uh, connecting the pieces here. So let's see how that turns out and see if this is uh, yeah what happens basically if this turns into something good. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this thing so we can compare it later. Uh, I'm gonna hide it. Uh, let's just duplicate the hands. Uh, move these down. Maybe I should merge everything. Yeah, why not? So. Uh, and now I need to find a way of connecting 
those things, so maybe let's just use a, um, I don't know, maybe this guy here. So let's just make this smaller. And let's just reduce the size. All right, something like this. Yeah, whatever, we're gonna move these things into place. Uh, let's just kind of connect uh, these guys here. Uh, we're gonna do another one connecting here, another one connecting there, another one connecting here, another one connecting there, and now we have uh, stuff that we can use to move around. Oh man, this is so much fun. Uh, yeah, I, I totally recommend you guys kind of challenging yourselves if you if you guys don't have the uh, the habit of doing things like this. Just kind of get out of your comfort zone. Uh, it's it's really helpful. It's also a lot of fun. So usually, I also again, usually I start with the head and the torso. So maybe for this piece, I'm gonna actually start with the legs because why not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I I hope this is fun for you guys to watch. And if it's not, I'm sorry, but I'm definitely having a lot of fun already. So let's just hide these hands. Hide these hands. Uh, maybe we should actually hide this to make it even more challenging. Okay, so that's good. Let's not make this more challenging than than what it is already, because this is. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna struggle a lot to get this right. So, all right, so let's just grab these leg piece here. Let me make sure we are kind of trying to capture. So we have the gray truck enter here and then like the silhouette's kind of going this way. So actually these feet, uh, it's, it's wrong. So this feet should be here because if, if I plumb, it goes straight to the head, so it should be a little bit more inside, which is gonna give us uh, the tilt of the knee. So the knee kind of points outwards a little bit, right? So, and then if you follow, uh, it goes in, outwards, and then it goes back in with this guy. Then from the side, let's see. It should go in, and then this should come in here. should go forward a little bit more uh, so if I plumb now yeah okay okay not bad not bad we're gonna do this I'm gonna make sure we are now building the glutes a little bit guys back this is a little bit too long so I need to fix this and, and again <laughs> if you guys are just joining right now this is this is not about how we sculpt in the industry this is not about the most optimal way of modeling things you know this is seem seem it in my head in the beginning as a really great exercise because uh, it was an amazing exercise that I did when drawing uh, from the live model. Uh, so I thought, 
it would be a great exercise to do um, in ZBrush. So let's actually see if I was right. Right now it's being fun, so I guess let's just make it fun. And I would probably just merge everything pretty soon. in a little bit to kind of go over some of the comments you guys may have I just want to be able to <laughs> oh my god this is fun though all right so me I think I'm gonna uh, split this guys and then hide this other one and then dynamesh this so we have a little bit more resolution so things are a little bit uh, clearer right now it was a little bit too wobbly and too loose uh, it was good for the time being but now I think it's time that we can start connecting some of these things together So maybe for, for the day, uh, maybe I could focus just on the legs and maybe that's, that's a good idea. Just kind of try to do something with the legs and then tomorrow or the other, the next time I stream, I can uh, do something else. All right, let's do the same thing. Whoops. Maybe I should just merge everything, right? What do you guys think? All right, let me just stop for a little bit. Cool. Um, if I have any plans on on teaching courses or workshops, uh, yes, maybe not right now, but in the future for sure. Uh, yeah, I've taught a lot in the past. Uh, it's been a while, so I kind of miss it. But I just want to make sure I have enough time to devote to the students, which I currently do not have. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. So do you think this is the most practical way to achieve a good gesture? For me, very difficult to be able to do something fluid. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this is the, the easiest way and the best way to achieve a gesture in ZBrush specifically. I think uh, playing with the mannequin or even with a, a very simple base mesh you can basically just kind of move things around and create different poses uh, that might be the easiest way uh, what I'm doing here is a great exercise in drawing and then I'm trying to see if it's a good exercise in ZBrush so I'll let you guys know uh, after I'm done I've never seen anyone doing uh, it, it is this in this specific way where you just start with the knees and floating pelvis and floating feet and then you kind of connect the dots but i'm pretty sure some somebody has tried this already but whatever um, so little ben benjamin is my kid yeah I'll, i'm gonna definitely uh introduce him to to art in general uh he already draws uh with me actually yeah, I, I have a picture here hanging on my wall. It's like me drawing with him, drawing on his little easel. Uh, but sure, I'm not gonna force anything, right? If he likes it, sure. If he doesn't like it, I was still gonna, I'm gonna still, uh, you know, uh, empower him to do whatever he wants to. All right, so it looks so fun. I like to make sure. Oh, so Steve Lord did this. Oh, that's that's interesting. I love his work. Uh, I'll check it out. 
yeah, S Steve is an amazing artist. Oh man, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I've never seen that. That's that's cool. That's good to know. Thanks for sharing. Hey, what's up, Gordon? Good to see you here, buddy. All right, so let's just kind of uh, maybe we should just connect everything because why not? So I'm just gonna dynamesh the whole thing. Yeah, we can actually smooth. Uh, so just kind of blend everything a little bit better uh, and maybe we should start with the pelvis so I'm gonna go for the iliac crest here this whole leg back a little bit and then this one yeah I'm, I'm already breaking the whole uh, pose but I think this is this is this is better yeah so we have this here much concern about the actual forms just trying to capture the big gest gesture first and again I'm very uncomfortable right now because like I said very new exercise uh, to, to model things this way in ZBrush so I'm but again uh, that's the whole purpose of study making yourself uncomfortable and learning and struggling. If you don't struggle, uh, you, you're probably not learning as much as you could. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, is kind of start to refine some of these forms. So I'm gonna go for like very basic forms. So keep keeping things a little bit more. I'll just disable this. A little bit less sketchy. So we have this shape here, which goes here. And then the knee, we're gonna go here. crotch
little more. So we we compare this. We should start adding a little bit of the glutes here. to here. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you guys in a little bit for more questions, if you guys have some. I'm just kind of trying to focus a little bit on this, so... And again, as you guys saw, we started on a very uh, different way, which is interesting.
Okay, I think it's time for another like quick break. Things are slowly taking shape, finding some of the structure. Yeah, not bad. Quick start for this leg. Uh, let me just kind of make sure I have my knee blocked out here. So we can use that to guide us. As another comparison and measure to measurement tool. See if you guys have any questions or anything. All right, so uh, I like to do something similar, but how do you measure things to ensure he hasn't a short leg? Well, I could be measuring from like the great trochanter to the uh, to the patella, for example, right? Uh, we can take this measurement and then kind of compare to this one here, and do the same thing for the calves. Uh, which in this case are a little bit on the long side uh, but honestly I'm, unless I feel that there is a need for me to, to measure uh, at this stage I do some preliminary measurements usually in the beginning uh, but otherwise unless something tells me that it's off I won't keep measuring Yeah, once we put the full guy together, we may we may see more proportional mistakes. But the good thing is that we are in ZBrush, uh, we are sculpting and making adjustments is part of the process, and we should be making them uh, non-stop until we finish the piece. So uh, this this is this is actually a really good tip for you guys. Uh, fixing mistakes, it's part of the process. Uh, and then, of course, the more we studied, the less mistakes we made. But uh, I think one, one of the big difference that I see from uh, students is that they, they make a mistake. They actually recognize the mistake, but they don't fix it for some reason. Uh, so if you spot a mistake, it, it doesn't matter. Just, just go ahead and fix it, right? and try to to have this mindset so if, if it's wrong just go ahead and and fix it okay so let's see you missing the guy yeah dude um yeah, I miss working with those guys, but I'm having a blast here at striking distance, so couldn't be happier. Do you sculpt by moving more usually or add remove clay? I, I kind of do both. Um, the thing that I don't like doing a lot is, so for example, putting the knee on whatever position and just moving the knee like this, right? I'll definitely do uh, small adjustments, but I don't like the idea of uh, putting random stuff in random places and just moving them until it, it feels right. Uh, I don't think that translates very well to drawing and to painting and I like to think that everything everything that I do is kind of part of the same uh, you know like same same system uh, I want to be able to paint draw and sculpt in the same way so yeah I hope, 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 hope that makes sense What's up? What's up, Joe? Joe Mana is here, man. Hey, glad glad to see you here, man. Uh, 
All right, so do I have some advice on time management? I mean, how often do you do full projects in your free time or do you spend little sketches studying or something specific? So this is a very interesting topic. Um, it really depends on where you are with your career and with your goals. So if I, if I wanted to build a new portfolio to to break in the industry, right? Something that I, that I did like many years ago, uh, I would probably focus my efforts into making one or two very complex projects, full projects, uh, where I can demonstrate everything that I want to, all of the skills, and then do additional smaller projects uh, and studies. But nowadays, uh, I tend to do studies focused on specific goals. So in this case today, I'm like a, like I said, like many times, I was kind of curious to see, to try a different approach, starting with like boxes and stuff like that. Um, when I'm drawing and painting, for example, uh, I'll usually pick a team and just go with it. So maybe I want to study uh, some gesture or things like that. So I, I guess it really depends on your your goals. Uh, but it's been a while since I've done like a personal project, like a full personal project, like months that takes me months where I sculpt, do low poly, like UVs and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I do that on a daily basis at work, right? So I, unless I want to study a specific, uh, or sometimes, sometimes I may just want to do it. And actually I have a bunch of uh, sketches and little projects that I started that I wanted to do a full project, full game ready project, but I ended up just kind of moving to something else. But you never know, I may get back to them uh, eventually. So if you zoom out really far, then use mask lasso. The mask will be much softer for move dense geometry. Yeah, that's a good tip. I think at this point, I'm gonna probably just dynamesh it one more time. And I don't know. I feel like, yeah, this is, this is a little bit shorter now. So let me just kinda. a little bit longer we can actually isolate these legs so we can work on the inside One thing that I like doing when I'm sculpting feet is actually have a stand. So might as well just kind of append a box or something. Let's just move this down. So we have some sort of like ground that I think this guy can be standing on. Hey, thanks, John. Um, so I started with like, you pretty, I'm pretty sure you know this type of exercise. So I started with something like this, right? I only had a, I built the whole thing from like boxes for each big landmark and kind of dis everything disconnected, just trying to capture the gesture first. So yeah, 
uh, been trying to apply all of the learnings from the Russian Academy uh, stuff that I've been studying onto the ZBrush sculpting, which is uh, very interesting to me and also makes uh, it very challenging because I'm not used to, to model this way. If you guys don't know Mena, uh, this guy is a legend. So I'm super happy to have you here, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. You guys should check out his work if you don't know him, but I'm pretty sure you know. Everybody knows Mena. I do not have this book, man. The, the name is familiar though. I may have seen it, but I, I definitely don't have it here. get carried away with just one leg so we might as well just jump to the second one I just want to make sure this is kind of uh, looking okay for now still fairly uh, simple but looks like we are getting somewhere So I used to, this is something that I talked yesterday for those who are joining today for the first time. I used to rely much more on the construction, meaning I would, you know, like in order to find these shapes, I would try to really define all of the anatomy, like draw everything in and, uh, and then let that dictate my form. Nowadays, again, I, I, I'm still trying different things, learning different things, right? So the whole idea right now for me is to try to capture the flow, the movement. Um, and, and of course, the anatomy is part of it, right? That's what makes everything kind of sync. But But like here, for example, I know what's going on here, right? You have like the... The femur here connecting to uh, your two little bones here for the leg. But so you have like the 
the IT band as well here. But what I'm trying to say is that here I'm, I'm trying to pay a little bit more attention to the silhouette and to the shapes. And then I will find the anatomy uh, within these shapes, these boundaries. And I think that, that kind of gives me a little bit of freedom um, and it makes me worry about other things also makes the process a little bit more fluid. Um, I believe it also gives us a little bit more of a naturalistic feel because uh, we, we can really mimic what we see. So it's a combination of things. Then of course, knowing the anatomy really helps to find some of these forms, right? I know the patella is here and then you have the big tendon connected. Uh, so I, I know kind of what's going on. So it helps me define the shapes, but again, trying to find those at a later stage than I used to do back in the day, like two months ago. <laughs> Or maybe maybe more like a year ago or something. So that that's kind of what I, what I just described, Callum. Um, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct, but basically I used to do the whole acre shape, right? So let me just save this. So I will do something like this, right? I will come in here and say, oh, like the form, everything is completely wrong. So I'm gonna, all right, I know there's something here and I know that patella is here. And then I know that this is here. And I know we have the shape here, the shape there. And then, you know, we have the quads. Uh, it connects here, it connects there. And then I'll use these to kind of guide me and then uh, move things around until it was like in the proper place. It's almost like drawing a diagram and then moving things into the proper place. Which And, and again, there's nothing wrong with uh, modeling or sculpting it this way. Um, I'm just, you know, like we, we grow and we evolve and uh, I've done my share, I believe, working that way. And, and now I'm just trying different methods and different uh, approaches. Uh, I, I believe that really makes, uh, really helps me in the long run. It's another tool set that I have to, that helps me navigate these very complicated forms, which I thought modeling humans, you would, would get easy after a while, but honestly, it keeps getting harder uh, because we are always trying to find and to capture uh, other stuff as well, right? And more accuracy. Hey, what's up, Matt? Yeah, man, all good, dude. Um, yeah, the fires are just crazy, man. Super sad, but yeah, thankfully we, we are safe here. Uh, we just can't really leave the home. Too much ashes, the, the pollution, it's kind of pretty bad. Our qu air quality, it's horrible. Uh, you see like ashes everywhere, but other than that, I can't complain. Uh, family is safe. Um, you know, busy with with work, so. All right, it's time to go to this other leg here. And I'll just move this out a little bit, because.
So it's been an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna probably uh, do this for another hour or so. So let's see how far we can we can push this tonight. to some of these questions. Uh. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Uh, I do agree. Making poems with shapes. Uh, that, that's a very nice way of putting it. Uh, what should a beginner focus more for sculpting? Is gestures first or anatomy? I think both are very important. Uh, they they kind of go hand, hand, hand to hand, so um, I would say both, do gesture studies, uh, do anatomy studies, um, I, I don't think I can pick one or the other, but I would say gesture always comes first, uh, even on a T-pose, right, there's a lot of gesture when modeling a guy just standing, there's a lot of like lines and, and flow that needs to be respected. So... Yeah, some of, some of the hips are, it's a little bit complicated to model without seeing uh, the rest. So I'm gonna kind of leave this whole section here for later. So when, to when I connect the whole, if I connect the, the torso, I'm gonna probably do on a different day, right? But yeah, it's definitely trickier. And, and like I said, I also I usually start with the torso because that's probably my favorite part to model, and then I go to the head, uh, maybe block out the legs. Uh, but again, kind of starting with the legs is good because it sets a good foundation for the whole piece. Uh, on the other side, on the other hand, since it's definitely not my favorite part to model or not used to be, but I'm kind of I've been learning how to to like to model legs. There's a lot of cool things that you can do, but anyways, it, it kind of you kind of get out of the way already, right? So if this is done, it's done, and then you go to the fun stuff. That's another way of of, of seeing it. Okay, so the, this form here, we're gonna try to capture the big curve. Uh, 
and there's a little bit of like rotation out to the knee and also to the feet here. So let me just do this. So the fit is pointing out kind of this way. kind of bringing the movement of the leg, emphasizing this curve, and then you see uh, this kind of pointing out. And then you can pushing the thumbs, the toes a little bit here. Uh, so it creates the, the contrast. Cool, all right, so let's just keep going. What's the weirdest body part to model? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't think I have... There's nothing very weird for me to model. Um, like I was saying, like the legs, uh, that's probably the one I've, I've done the least amount of times. Uh, I do like modeling feet. Uh, I think they are very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think there's something there's something that, that I would call weird. But hey, Gus. Hey, good to see you here, brother. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad. Glad this is helpful in a way. I gotta admit, talking and and modeling, being out of your comfort zone it's definitely not easy so kudos to all of the teachers and everybody that does this on a daily basis um, it's definitely not easy so usually when you teach or when i teach uh, i kind of go over process that are very ingrained in my head that i've done like multiple times you know that i don't need to concentrate too much it's almost like second nature so which makes talking a little bit easier but tonight, I mean, I'm not completely out of my comfort zone, right? Uh, it was mainly the way we started, uh, which is not very conventional or, and neither the way I used to work. But now that we have like some established forms, I'm kind of, I feel a little bit in a safer place. <laughs> I, I know I can take this to, to a, a finish level and and kind of, I know I can make this believable, right? So that makes things a little bit more comforting to me. But all right, so let's just kind of uh, move the glutes here, making sure I'm emphasizing uh, this line. And I want to make sure the tilt, the tilt of the pelvis, it's there. So we're gonna emphasize here on the glutes, maybe move this down. Uh, let's just do a quick check. Yeah, this should be lower. And we can use this to rotate uh, the area of the crotch as well. So we can feel that this is kind of coming this way. And we can feel the weight. I had a teacher in Russia who said the movement of the neck started at the calf. Well, that, that's very well said. That's amazing. Um, that, that's awesome, man. All 
I had I have a huge respect for all of the Russian Academy and Russian artists. Uh, I don't know. There, there's something about it that it's well probably comes from the the training and and the, the methodology, but it it feels so different. So that, that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to learn a little bit more, like, why. And it's basically, what, I, what, I, what I'm learning is that they value different things. They have different processes, they have different values, in a sense that the way they approach the construction, the, the way they approach uh, the, whole, the whole art thing, uh, figurative art at least and that makes sense if you have a different process you value different things and you end up with different results and to me I find them the most pleasing style uh, especially drawing so I want to I want to mimic that a little bit more uh, I want to incorporate everything that I've been learning into my 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 studies and I think this is a little bit too low let's just do a quick adjustment here yeah that's better so let's just bring this knee in a little bit I think it's time to focus on the other leg. Um, let's see. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, uh, good to see you, man. Stay safe, you too, brother. Take it easy, man. See you soon. <laughs> I'm very crazy, but you are... <laughs> funny i'm not crazy uh i'm just i just like the, the the whole philosophy about creating art and the whys and you know <laughs> that's funny uh thanks guys appreciate the kind words uh, hey what's up matthew thanks man good to see you here too man So for those of you who just tuning in, uh, let me just do a quick recap. We started this with a very uh, different type of exercise. This is, was my first time doing this in 3D. Uh, so I basically just put a bunch of boxes, try to capture the whole uh, attitude and gesture, uh, just using very primitive like boxes. Um, this is an exercise that I've done multiple times on, on a paper with pencil that I wanted to try to translate. So, and then I kind of connected everything and now I'm working on the, just, just the legs. So the whole body, you can, <laughs> you can see how, how I started connecting everything. So hopefully I, I will, you know, connect the, the, the remaining pieces at some point, but definitely not today. Um, uh, <laughs> It's just funny. I'm laughing because this is this is this is pretty awesome. Uh, not 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 that the model is awesome, but it's awesome to try new things. You know, get out of completely out of your comfort zone, and and I'm pretty sure I, I keep repeating myself, but I don't have much else to say other than these, right? Uh, yeah, this gets me excited. All right, so hey, thanks everybody who joined us. Uh, if you guys need to head out, just go ahead and do it. Thanks. I appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, spending some time together tonight. So how long does it take me to do a full piece? I usually like to say uh, generic piece, right? Like, I mean, it, it really depends on the model. Uh, it depends on, on many different factors, but I, I like to say that 
uh, around three weeks for a high poly i think that that's some good uh, basic number to start with uh, really depends on the on the on what you're doing but and then maybe like a week and a half maybe two weeks depending on the low poly depending on the on the on the subject and maybe two more weeks for texturing and maybe another week for uh, tuning in everything else or yeah give and take not not a bad estimate for for some generic uh, model for games Joe, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Uh, we should, we should go to, to Russia together. How about that? How does that sound? Uh, maybe we should take some, you know, like grab some vacation time uh, in a couple of years or whatever, or take a sabbatical or something like that, and go to Russia, uh, and then we can just go there and just study and just, you know, do art get better that would that would be amazing and i know you spent a lot of time over there studying uh, yeah I, I hope to have the chance to do something like that one day as maybe some of you know i i never went to art school uh, uh i ended up going i have a bachelor degree in uh, film right so i studied four years in college for a film uh, i went to the film school so anything visual uh, related uh, from like photograph uh, it really it really gave me a, a nice a, a solid foundation it's slightly different than visual artists usually have when going to to the art school meaning you you get to do a lot of like drawing and painting and uh, you you learn the foundations of, of all, all of those things i never had that so uh, i sometimes i i th that maybe that's one of the reasons i like to study a lot of like academic art because i've never had the chance to do to do that uh, officially in a way like purely just spend time doing academic art uh, maybe maybe my love for academic art comes from that but yeah I, I hope to have the chance to do that someday I, I love to just be able to just focus on studying and um, just just learning new stuff All right, let's just focus on this leg now. Uh, so this one, let's just try to capture the whole silhouette first. So you have this coming here this way. I feel this is actually a little bit too bent, so no, that should be fine. Maybe this knee should be a little bit lower. Yeah, it should definitely be lower. this 
just add a little bit of mass. Sometimes I like to just inflate things a little bit so it gives me a little bit more room for... Uh, it makes using clay brush and move brush a little bit easier. So then these feet, this is actually doing this. So you have the big toe here. Uh, and then I'm gonna kinda stretch the other toes this way. Uh, very kind of classical uh, pose. So then we're gonna be able to see this here. And then you probably see, I need to get some references for this, but you're gonna probably see the pinching here. can have the curly uh, little toes here on the side again very classical very Michelangelo ish really trying to to kind of break the pose a little bit So I do have some references here, but um, I'm, I'm kind of not copying them 100%. Uh, I'm taking some liberty to emphasize some things, and like especially these feet here, for example. I want to make this a little bit more interesting than in the references. So I'm taking some liberties to just make things sink a little bit more. As if you were in a life drawing class, and then if you are absorbing what you see, but also adjusting and making uh, small changes uh, to kind of make things a little bit cooler, or or even just to kind of get the point across a little bit better. is a little bit too So this is another question I, I I have for you guys is for those who are watching this now or even if you were watching this later where did you see that I was going live did you did you see that on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook so I'm just curious to see where you guys are coming from if you don't mind YouTube, that's interesting. So yesterday a lot of people came from YouTube as well, which I, I had no idea. Yeah, so YouTube homepage, that, that's crazy, man. Oh, that, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so that's crazy. It seems like YouTube 
it's kind of spreading the word across better than uh, <laughs> better than Instagram, which you know I have a lot of followers in there, but uh, yeah, I don't know what's what's going on with the whole algorithms stuff uh, lately. It's just being bad, but whatever. So that's that's good to know. So maybe I shouldn't. I, maybe I don't need to actually post in there when I go live. Um, if people can just see me, if you guys can find me just from you know like the YouTube channel, that's even better, I guess. You know, for me, the thing about doing these lives, sometimes I just feel like doing it and then I just do it. Uh, the whole scheduling thing, it's a little bit hard for me uh, because of my job and because of my family, my, my kid. and So I, I can't really do stuff like I'm going to go live every Monday or I'm going to go live every every Sunday, right? Like, so stuff like that, it's very hard for me to commit to. I have other priorities, but if you guys are able to just tune in whenever I, I join, that that's amazing because I don't need to worry too much about about those things. Uh, and, and again, I'll, actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, this is gonna be recorded, so uh, you guys can just watch it later too. So whatever, not a big of a deal anymore. What made me live stream together with Ref? Well, Ref just invited me and we had some fun. Uh, I haven't been hiding in my cave. Well, maybe maybe I have. Um, it's not that I'm hiding, it's basically that I spent this past full year just uh, painting and drawing uh, and, and didn't have much to share uh, in a way. So I uh, was very focused on just studying and and now I feel like I'm back and trying to, to see how much it actually helped me and how much I learned and I gained through this uh, this time away from uh, digital sculpting on my free time. I, I mean, I never stopped sculpting digitally, right? Like I work with this on a daily basis, but uh, I mean, on a, on a personal level. Okay, this is, this is kind of looking okay now. I think it's time to start refining some of these forms a little bit. So let's start adding a little bit more information. other social media other than art stage oh that's cool that's actually good to know um, yeah I haven't posted on art station you know in a long time maybe I should do more but I, I still visit it on a weekly basis uh, to check out the amazing artwork and stuff
I have plans to stream traditional sculpting. Yeah, probably. Uh, I just need to find a way of setting things up. But if I pick up the momentum on streaming on YouTube, yeah, I'll, I'll probably uh, stream some some traditional stuff, which I kind of miss. Uh, I was telling earlier that I might do, I may, I may pick up a VR headset and just start sculpting in VR uh, and maybe stream uh, and share my my process along the way, kind of trying to learn the whole VR stuff. That sounds like a fun thing to do with you guys. So at this point, what I'm going to probably do uh, is uh, probably just zero mesh the whole thing, just to kind of give me a cleaner geometry to work with, although the fit still needs a lot of work, I need to cut the toes and whatnot, but it just makes things a little bit easier to, to control and to manipulate. So I'm gonna now project everything. So I kind of bring back uh, the, the forms. Save. And now I have a better surface to start adding secondary forms and even defining the primary forms a little bit better. So let's see. 
think we can start with this leg here. And I like to isolate to kind of remind myself that I'm only focusing on that specific area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of refine the forms that I see a little bit more and kind of balancing out the areas of interest, meaning I'm not going to make everything as deep or as strong as I see, I may just kind of play with the intensities to, to make this a little bit more interesting, kind of organizing what I see in a way. This is, at this time, this is where all of the anatomy study starts to come into play. So s s some, some of these forms are very hard to see in the, in the reference uh, and they, all, they almost get invisible in a way, unless it's like very perfectly lit. But when dealing with, with, with sculptures, uh, you, are, you are always dealing with the form, right? So there's very little you can do with the pic picture plane uh, unless you are sculpting something in the same light condition that, that your reference is at uh, and then you can totally kind of mimic the shadow shapes and all of that stuff but uh, and then I think I need to rely a little bit more on the construction at this point to kind of make sure uh, my forms are correct or even I'm, I'm actually building something that kind of looks interesting in a way but I'm not gonna make an echo shape right I'm still trying to capture make this as natural as possible because that's my goal if that's not your goal don't do it <laughs> uh,
Yeah, I'm, I'm very concentrated right now, so sorry if I'm kind of uh, uh, being a little bit too quiet. But if you guys have any questions, if you just just drop in the comments, and I'll read those in a, in a little bit. singing <laughs> I'll start singing pretty soon uh, <laughs> you guys are funny oh, man. yeah so if you guys have any questions or about anything uh, drop in the comments and I'll, and I'll read those in maybe like 10 minutes or something let me just try to get a couple more shapes going on here. It's very hard without without seeing the rest, without seeing like the, the connection here. Uh, I don't want to give any excuses, but I, I, I find a very hard time to, to kind of compare and to even look at the reference without having like mo more stuff. So cannot make this uh, too tight otherwise unfortunately there's a bunch of like policies and you know like stuff like that with nude figures so this is not a nude figure YouTube if you are listening to me this is not a nude let's just kind of cover cover it up here
fala Redfield. Pô, obrigado, velho. Alex, sem palavras, velho. Alex, puta, além de um grande amigo, o cara que mais me influenciou na minha jornada. Se você estiver falando com ele aí, manda um abraço pra ele. E... Com muito orgulho de... de ter o Alex como amigo e... e principalmente ter tido como professor, como mentor, como, como um grande mestre mesmo. Seems like the zebra. So, yeah, my UI is it's very custom, earnest. But uh, I actually have a, I have like hotkeys for all of my most used brushes. So, for example, A is the standard. I press S is the clay. I press D is the move, and so on and so forth. So that's how I'm, I'm able to kind of move between the brushes like very easily and organically uh, I'm, I'm definitely not typing uh, B uh, and V or whatever like you know like this the standard uh, ZBrush hotkeys okay I, I'll fix this uh, the glutes later so I just wanted to have something in there Yeah, exactly. on this other, other leg.
all right all right um yeah i was completely <laughs> uh, zoned out for, for 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 a while but i'm back i was working on some uh, very complicated shapes so i, I needed to to kind of focus on them for a little bit all right so let's just let's just go back to the stream so uh, all right banter 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 <laughs> did you change the roll distance on the brush it looks smooth uh, hi Manu I, I I honestly don't even know what the roll distance is so i definitely didn't change anything this is just a the clay build up brush uh that i kind of build up the forms and just kind of smooth that's how i usually work and i, I guess the, the the part that makes the surface very smooth is that i have a clean topology so i, I zero meshed everything uh couple minutes ago that that really helps with uh, the smoothing algorithm I feel like because uh, when you, you smooth like triangulated meshes you, you ended up getting like weird triangles and it doesn't seem to really like uh, subdividing and smoothing dyna mesh so uh, what is your sculpting drawing ratio a day? Is it 13 hours of sculpt and 13 hours of draw a day? <laughs> Honestly, this is this is mostly well, I work nine to ten hours every day. Um, so I have very little time for myself. I'd say maybe like two, three hours almost every day. It, it's not every single day. It's maybe like four days a week, five days a week, depending on the week. That, that seems like a good, uh, that seems kind of accurate to how much, how much time I have for devoting to drawing and sculpting and yeah, just bring this down a little bit. Hey Gordon, no, I totally agree, man. I know uh, I'm kind of new to the string thing, and like I was saying, like it gets sometimes it gets very complicated. If unless I'm I'm doing something like I did yesterday that I'm that I don't need to think too much, uh, that I'm kind of it's very ingrained in my head, uh, like modeling ahead, for example, I've done like a billion times. But today it was a very special uh, day because I, I tried to do something completely out of my comfort zone, and I gotta admit that. It never feels easy to model uh, uh, full full bodies and and poses and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, we could we could totally do that sometime. That would be cool. Do you plan on streaming more often? Yes, totally. Uh, I actually did it yesterday. I liked it, uh, and then today I decided to do it again. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna when the next time will be, but. It might be tomorrow. It may be in a in a week or so. Uh, like I was saying, I, I don't I don't want to commit myself too much. I want this to be kind of you know kind of just without commitment, just kind of be something that I do whenever I feel like doing uh, for fun. And it looks like most of you came from YouTube, which is a good thing. So I don't need to worry too much about. Uh, kind of scheduling things and you know advertising them are going to be doing this and, and also because this will be recorded um, and then you you guys can watch it later so that's that's fine but of course doing this live it's much more fun uh, interactive i don't feel like i'm alone feels like we are just having fun together 
All right, looking from far away, I kind of like what I'm seeing, uh, although I see some uh, uh, small proportional issues, especially with this knee here uh, that I need to address. It's basically just the shape of the knee, it's a little bit wrong. Uh, this foot seems a little bit on the big side. I need to address this as well. Uh, let's bring back our cube. Just kind of uh, do some touch ups here and there. And I said I was going to stop when this hit two hours, but I might do a little bit more just because I, I want to make this. A little bit better because I still see a lot of mistakes and things that I that I want to improve. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Giovanni. Appreciate it, man. So, Fabio, how to stay motivated in the industry? You cannot use the bills as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, you definitely cannot. I mean, honestly, I work with an amazing talented team uh, that by itself just just inspires me a lot right I get to see amazing artwork on a daily basis uh, and it's been like that since I came to the US even before the US when I was working in Brazil I, I, I always felt very fortunate to work alongside very talented people but so so that in, in, a, in, in itself really inspires me um, but other than that, just realizing that I still have a lot to learn and that and things like today, for example, I felt like, what if I just try a different exercise, you know, kind of it makes things fun. Um, trying new things. I love learning new stuff. So, for example, uh, last year I spent a couple months learning Python. Uh, <laughs> So this year I decided to do painting and drawing, you know, like kind of shifting things around and kind of forcing myself to not be comfortable. It's something that I enjoy doing. And, and, but the, the whole thing for me is just the learning, uh, learning new stuff. Uh, I just love learning. Uh, it really motivates me. Uh, it kind of opens up a uh, huge, you know like lots of opportunities to get to know to meet new people and get to know like different cultures and uh, different mindsets uh, so right now it's uh, 10 30 p.m All right, so hit me up if you need advice. Uh, for sure, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk later, Gordon. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, dude. So for improving in anatomy sculpting, do you think it's better to sculpt the full body or individual parts? I think doing both, it's actually great. So you, you gotta, it's, it's much more manageable if you are focusing on individual parts, but at the same time, you need to connect them together, right? Um, so, it's very beneficial to do both. I would say keep things simple in the beginning. Uh, don't even go to full body parts or like really body parts. Just try to model. I always like to to go back to one step at a time type of stuff. So uh, model an ear. Uh, an ear, it's a very interesting shape because people don't usually pay too much attention to the ear, but at the same time, we all recognize uh, an ear. Uh, so kind of try to use that to your advantage, uh, try to kind of mimic the shapes and, and, you know, and then, and then go from there and then you can do like a head and then you can do some, some other stuff. Uh, all right. So this.
so when you become comfortable with streaming you quit <laughs> yeah you know gotta switch things around uh oh man i'm like laughing pretty pretty hard here so how long did it take you to start doing studies of the human form in motion poses rather than stuff like a pose anatomy uh i don't recall um I probably spent a couple months just doing like static, but you know, like I've, I've always, so I, I remember when I was taking a ZBrush class and then the teacher would assign us, uh, exercises and, and I would do those exercises. There was, those were very static, but at the same time I would, I would look at artists that I admired and, you know, like copying Michelangelo, Bernini and those guys and, and uh, trying to uh, trying to mimic them and understand what uh, what makes something believable and what makes uh, things dynamic. So, yeah, I know I recommend keep keep starting simple. I, I believe it's it's also important to explore and to try uh, complicated stuff, but just don't get frustrated because it will be very hard. So uh, maybe focus on building uh, things, the simple stuff, and then as a as a side exercise, you can just try very complicated ones just to see how it how how just to you know get a taste of how complicated it is to make things post. Uh, but again, kind of focus on building the foundation first, which is uh, doing uh, the, the, the basic stuff first. And then if you are drawing, definitely do a lot, lots of gesture drawings. And uh, that, that's one, one, one of the things that how, like drawing helps a lot. Sculpting something in pose, it's much harder than to just try to capture the pose. Uh, you can do those with uh, just kind of pose studies with uh, rigid assets or even with a mannequin that's very helpful to just kind of study poses or you can just draw right like drawing I think it's much more effective for capturing uh, silhouettes and, and 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 gestures Yeah, I hope that answers your question.
all right, all right. So, uh, hey, what's up, Abraão? Good to see you here, man. Humor com tudo para concentração total. Yeah, you know, I gotta stay concentrated. Um, yeah, especially when you start hitting uh, more delicate shapes and forms, uh, it definitely requires more efforts. Like, yeah, I, I need to, you know, really think about what I'm doing and analyzing. Definitely not easy. No, this is fun because uh, if you guys weren't here, I would be uh, sculpting by myself. But since you guys are here, I'm not sculpting by myself, which which is fun. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, Abraham definitely has a really good point. We got to surround ourselves by motivated people. And w once you do it, uh, you, you start to, to feel it too, you know? Uh, it's like... I, I truly believe on that. You gotta you gotta surround yourself with people that motivates you and so so let's do that let's you know kind of motivate ourselves and 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 sculpt study talk and this is probably like the tenth time that I'm, I'm working on these knee but I almost feel like this knee is the it's kind of the strong contrast in this whole composition so it's, it's super important for me to get this one right um, but let's just keep moving So 
let's try to emphasize a little bit more of the movement so we have the leg coming this way then we break on the knee and then they, they come back this way and maybe we should make this a little bit higher yeah that's better I think it's time to work a little bit more on the other leg and maybe call it a night, maybe 15 more minutes or something. Uh, are you guys drawing or sculpting or or are you guys just, just watching? J just let me know. Don't forget to smash that like button, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nice. bother too much about the glutes uh, once we connect the torso I will fix those uh, let's make sure we are capturing some of uh, these forms here and, and again like I was saying before the whole process of sculpting and in art in general it's about fixing the mistakes right so if you see something off go ahead and fix it. If you see something off, go ahead and fix it. Uh, and I, I gotta admit that if something doesn't look right, it's probably not right. So, so a lot of time I kind of let myself just kind of just let my eyes kind of flow on the image and kind of trying to search for something that stands out. And then usually when I say, oh, w what's going on there? And then I know that something's wrong. And then I go and look, check with the references and, and fix it. So although I have some references here, um, th this is not, it doesn't look exactly like re the reference I've been. I changed the pose a little bit. I am I'm, I'm also emphasizing some of these forms also kind of uh, toning down others just to make this a little bit more pleasing to to my aesthetic um, but in order to make this foot very real for example I definitely need better references which I don't have so I'm gonna keep this very simple and you know very loose for now uh, it's very flat doesn't have a, it doesn't feel very dynamic uh, as I want but I'm not gonna bother too much just because I know once I grab the references this this will change a lot so I'm just gonna keep the efforts to a minimum here so it kinda feels okay This knee is still bothering me a little bit, so... Actually, both knees. Why, why knees are so hard? So actually... Oh, I, I know what's going on, so... The flow here, this should be kind 
coming this way and I need to kind of break the twist of the knee a little bit and kind of emphasize these lines that I'm not I haven't really captured this very well so this is, should be a little bit lower work on the silhouette a little bit more and then just call it a night. Okay, so this guy. Still keep keeping everything kind of somewhat loose, uh, and again, in order to really refine everything, I need better references. Uh, probably gonna pull up like some anatomy stuff as well, just as a, re as a refresher uh, to really be able to construct everything properly. But right now, I'm just going with my intuition and with what I can see in these images. But again, knowing that I will have to come back and and refine some stuff. I feel like this is good for tonight. Uh, just add a couple more uh, little forms in here. And hopefully you guys learned something or at least uh, had some fun with me trying this new exercise. And we're gonna do a full a quick recap just to see how we started and where we are at right now. I'm gonna probably keep working on this piece uh, soon. I'm gonna try to only work when I'm live so you guys can watch the whole process. And I, it's also nice to have that recorded. Uh, it's gonna be probably my first time recording a something like this from from the very beginning and 
here I am again, working on that knee one more time. <laughs> but, but like I said, probably one of the most important uh, parts of this uh, study. So I want to make sure I'm kind of capturing this right. Classical change of mat cap just to kind of do a final check. All right, guys, this is, th th that's about it. Uh, almost three hours, I'm kind of tired, exhausted. I think we, we made good progress. So just to recap, we started with something like this. Uh, quick exercise, trying to capture the, uh, the silhouette or the gesture, You're just using primitives, uh, really nice exercise, and then we, Kind of merge everything together we blended everything together and then we spend most of our time refining uh, some of these forms and you can see this is probably like from like two hours ago it's it's very similar to what i have uh, but this is a little bit more refined there's a little bit more finesse on on the forms and the shapes and the accuracy so yeah hope you guys uh, liked it enjoyed or had some fun uh, and I'll be back eventually maybe tomorrow or the other day 
uh, but soon, probably this week, to kind of keep working, to continue working on on this piece. So yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, let me just see, do a quick check on the questions. making real-time hair. I actually love working on hair. <laughs> this is something that I really enjoy doing. So yeah, have some fun, man. Um, sculpting a hero anatomy for freelance. That's cool. Good stuff. You're just watching. Try to mimic my study later. Yeah, go for it. I'm actually excited. So if you... I want to see. Just tag me on a post or something. Uh, definitely want to check it out. Character design is very, yeah, thanks. All right, all right. All right, thanks, guys. Uh... Valeu, galera. Um abração para todo mundo aí. Obrigado a todo mundo que entrou. Vou com certeza fazer mais. Thank you all. I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. Uh, I had a blast. So stay safe, take it easy, folks, and see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>